Yuseb Shamari, CEO of C Markets. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Hello, good afternoon, Alexander, and I'm very happy to speak to you today. Very happy to have you on the show. Welcome back, Yosef. So, um, of course, we have a lot of market movers over there. From one side, of course, the situation in China with lockdowns on the other side, uh, the war in Ukraine right in the heart of Europe. So I was wondering specifically today what's driving the price action and, and, and what, what, what's the explanation of this major retreat in terms of prices on a fundamental basis? Um, well, as you have seen over the past uh, weeks, there's been a huge volatility. Brent prices exceeded $130 a barrel, and then we were expecting that they could continue their way up to 150 as the situation in Ukraine was escalating with this military confrontation, where people actually went even to worse, to worse than that, expecting a confrontation between NATO and Russia, and that's what was really driving the markets up. But now, we there is kind of a the negotiations between Russia and Ukraine have kind of calmed the market down. So people are, are, are investors are kind of expecting some sort of a ceasefire, and that's what actually has, let's say, reduced the volatility somehow. So we're seeing now a price retreat to less than $100, which was, in fact, much lower than what we what we expected, because I thought prices could stabilize where supply and meat demand at slightly close to 100 But anyway, it's not that far from $100. And I think one major reason also here is markets have also priced in a lockdown in China that can actually escalate within the Chinese or the Chinese zone affecting the Chinese econ economic growth and that ultimately will affect demand going forward this year. This year we're expecting demand to be around 4, four million barrels that can be revised down if the situation in, in China continues to deteriorate further and further, especially here one thing I want to highlight is that it is not just uh, how many cases of COVID they are reporting but the lockdown itself is what actually can affect oil demand because there will be no transportation movement around and this is a very important industrial hub and china accounts for around 50 percent of growth in demand on an annual basis and i get, i guess this is what the, the biggest worries for the market now of course that can here at, at let's say uh, be a good, uh, good news for opec plus because opec plus has always been cautious it's been always under pressure to ramp up production so what's happening now in the markets i guess will show to opec plus well we've been doing the right approach despite all pressures especially from the us and the uk after the sanctions that we have seen on banning russian accruals from the markets um, so I guess here we're also expecting a, there's a meeting happening end of no month this year. So I think the the in fact the the organization or the group has been expected to ramp up production by more than 400 barrels by adjusting the baselines. That means they can ramp up production by around 800,000 barrels. So I think with this retreat in prices. Um, perhaps they can adjust some kind of the uh, the policy a little bit. Maybe stick to the four hundred thousand barrels and postpone the the adjusting the baselines to up for another month. That's a possibility, but I certainly I cannot uh, confirm that. Um, I was wondering, um, since we saw, of course, uh, the, the OPEC plus so far a little kind of reluctant to increase production despite, as you've mentioned, uh, U.S. pressure, um, do you think that possible re-entrance of Iran into the market in Venezuela might change this, how can I say, outlook in terms of prices and, and also, of course, OPEC production capacity? Um, well, we've been expecting Iranian production to come back, uh, especially with expected deal between the uh, U.S. Uh, and the Western powers and Iran. But, you know, since the sanctions were imposed by the U.S. on the Russian cruise, we, we all have seen that Russia has been making it difficult for the P P5 plus one to reach to a, an agreement with Iran. And certainly that's in the interest of the Russians because they don't want to the, the, they don't want to have a placement for their crudes. Uh, one thing here is that Iranian crude cannot be, oh sorry, Russian crude cannot be replaced by all types of crude oil. You definitely need a, a, a Middle Eastern type of crude oil. And that would only be in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq on, uh, because that kind of crude oil, which has got an API density of around 30. And it's also uh, about the self, essentially that crude oil would give you more diesel. So it, uh, US crude cannot replace that. So it is either Iran or worst case Venezuela and I guess that's the reason why Russia has been making it tough for the US to reach to an, into an agreement with Iran and I think uh, here the, the, the situation is becoming very complex so if Russia continues to be stiff 
with the negotiations here, perhaps the U.S., the only option for the U.S. here is to try and ease the sanctions a little bit in order to try and bring Iranian crude oil back into the markets without reaching a final deal. Well, what you said is really interesting and the comparison between between the, the two countries. So, so do you think that Venezuelan oil is actually uh, not a good option in terms of Russian oil substitute? Um, well, Venezuela is uh, is not a bad option, but the thing here is that you need kind of naphtha. Naphtha is kind of a chemical that is produced from petroleum products, and it acts as a solvent because it is quite heavy, viscous, difficult to flow. So they need that solvent in order to enable it to, to, to flow easily and send it to refineries. So here's the difficulty: it costs more to get, to process Venezuelan crude. That's the first uh, difficulty. The second difficulty is the lack of investments and in, and the deteriorate, deteriorating infrastructure in Venezuela compared to Iran. So it is much more difficult for Venezuela to bring back its production to uh, pre uh, crisis levels before the, uh, the you know as you know the political instability happened a few years back uh, so it's hard for them to reach to that level compared to Iran Re Iran certainly is a much better situation final take you um, I was wondering what's the worst case scenario for crude oil uh, market in the first half of the year in terms of prices um, well, uh, well, uh, uh, Alexander, it's, it's very volatile. Uh, here we yeah. have two extreme cases. If the uh, Russian uh, Ukrainian conflict continues to escalate, I would certainly expect prices to re to rebound back again to the to three digits, perhaps 120 or 130. Uh, if there is a ceasefire and there is kind of a stability without taking chi what's happening in China into account, I would think prices would stabilize around $100 for Brent. If the situation in in China continues to deteriorate further, and we see further lockdowns and impact impact on Chinese crude oil demand, then I think prices could go down to a ninety dollar for Brent in the first half of uh, twenty twenty two. Great to talk to. Great catching up with you, Yusef Oshimori, CEO of C Marcus. Thank you so much for joining us, and of course, have uh, a great day ahead. Always a pleasure, Alexander. Thanks for having me.